So something extremely paradoxical happens when you reach God consciousness. What you realize is that it's not that there is no such thing as free will. A lot of spiritual teachers and non-dual teachers will just tell you that, oh, all of the ego's desires to mean, manipulate are just narcissism and uh, there, the ego isn't even real, therefore the ego has no control over anything. This is not quite correct because this paints uh, too blunt of a picture. It, it paints a misleading picture in the mind of the student about what will really is because it, it, it basically gives you the false idea that will doesn't exist. Like if you ask a scientist, does will exist? A scientist will say no. And that's precisely false. It's not that will doesn't exist. It's actually 180 degrees the opposite of that. It's that everything is infinite will. You might say, well, Leo, what's the difference? There's actually a profound difference. So ultimately what you realize in the recent awakening that I had is I became so conscious that I became conscious of how I was willing my entire body and my entire reality into existence. And I was fully conscious of how I was doing that. In other words, when I'm moving my fingers right now, my hand, I can actually tap into a consciousness of how this as the entire universe, not, not as a human, but as the entire universe, this hand is being moved with a perfect intelligence, absolute perfection staggering intelligence is going into the movements of this hand. Now, is Leo controlling this hand? That's the illusion. That's the illusion I was under for most of my life when I believed I was Leo. But as my sense of self expanded to that of the entire universe, now it's not that Leo is moving the hand using his will. And it's not that will doesn't exist. It's that universal will, God's will, is moving this hand perfectly. And I can become so connected to God's will that I literally merge into God's will. And then my movements, it doesn't be, it's not like I'm a zombie anymore. You might think, oh, you know, removing the ego just makes you a zombie. No, 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 no. <laughs> it doesn't make you a zombie. It makes you God. It makes you infinitely conscious and intelligent of the flow, the intelligent flow that is guiding the entire universe. And you and this body are just part of that entire infinite flow. You are an infinite flow, a flow of infinite intelligence. This is not something you're using your logical mind to grab onto because the logical mind itself cannot grasp onto this because the logical mind is finite, it's not infinite. So this is not going to make scientific sense. If you're trying to make sense of this scientifically or logically, it won't work because all of your logic and your science and your language and your thoughts are all dualistic. This only works with pure non-dual consciousness. There can't be any separation between you and God, you and the world, you and the universe, you and other creatures and animals. It all has to be one. You have to recognize it all as one totality as the universe as the field of consciousness that you are. And then the most astounding thing will happen is that you will realize that everything is a manifestation of your will and it's absolutely perfect. And you don't need to struggle so hard anymore to manipulate things anymore using your finite ego mind. Now you can flow using universal mind, using the, intel the intelligence of universal mind. You can tap into that. It's like surfing a wave. The wave will overpower you if you try to go head up against it. The way you surf a wave is that you align yourself with the wave such that you're riding on the, on the edge of the wave at just that perfect balancing point where the wave can push you forward, but it's not going to be too much to overwhelm you and drown you. And then, you learn to surf on that wave and you actually become part of that wave. You and the wave are one. There's no distinction between surfer and wave anymore. And the whole thing is just one intelligent flow.
balancing itself, regulating itself, controlling itself, defining itself, creating itself, willing itself into existence. And then what you recognize is that, ah, my entire life, because I've identified as being something smaller than the whole universe, I had to struggle against the universe. And that's why my life felt like a grind, like a struggle. And that's why I was so emotionally dysfunctional and neurotic. And I was depressed and angry and emotional and jealous and petty and all this sort of stuff because I was fighting against myself. I was the universe improperly defining itself as something less than the universe, some part of the universe. I didn't fully accept and embrace my full universal identity. And therefore I had to be in struggle with myself all the time. And that was exhausting and it led to illness in me and it led to confusion, frustration, depression, suicidal ideation, things like this. And it wasted an enormous amount of energy. I was interfering with myself the whole time. That's what you realize. You realize that the ego is a self-interference pattern. It gets in its own way. The ego tells itself that it can control more of reality if it just clings harder. Then the ego will get everything it wants. If I can just cling more, if I can cling more to sex, if I can cling more to my family, if I can cling more to material objects, if I can cling, cling more to money and my job, then I should have a better life. That's what it seems like, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the whole thing is predicated upon a lie. That you are something that needs to cling to other things, to possess other things. But when you realize that you are the entire universe, do you need to cling anymore to money or to family or to people or to sex or to whatever? No, because you're conscious that you're the entire flow. Therefore, there is no more clinging. And when there's no more clinging, that is actually the thing that frees up a lot of energy within you to then be at your peak potential as a human. Because now you've gotten out of your own way. Now, rather than using your finite intelligence and will, now you're aligning yourself instead with your true intelligence and true will, which are infinite and universal. So it's not about clinging or manipulating reality more. It's about surrendering those attachments in a very counterintuitive way. You surrender all those, and then you flow with the highest intelligence and the highest will, which is nothing other than your own will. You're just recognizing your own highest will rather than the petty little human will that you used to believe you had.